Testing is a critical component of TRT. You really don't know how effective testosterone therapy is being if you are not testing and retesting. This is the most important aspect of TRT. You want to test before beginning and you want to test frequently after. Sometimes you're testing as much as quarterly, but you definitely want to be testing at least once per year, if not twice per year. My recommendation is quarterly testing in the beginning, and then certainly you can move to one to two times per year. Let's get into this a little bit in terms of initial testing. What test to get done? Well, the first thing you want to do is a chem panel with lipids and TSH, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. This is a standard test that all doctors do whenever you go to see them, so this won't be a big deal. Also, the complete blood count, also known as the CBC, this will also be done by your physicians as standard laboratory measures whenever you go to see your physician. In addition to the chem panel and the CBC, you want a total testosterone as well as a free testosterone, also known as a direct testosterone. You also want an estradiol or an E2. This is a measure of estrogen. And you really want the high sensitivity estradiol, which is specific for men. DHEA sulfate and vitamin D levels are also really useful to get done. Obviously, if you're dealing with erectile dysfunction issues and DHEA sulfate is low, supplementing with DHEA is highly effective. So you're going to want to know if this is something that is going to be useful for you. Also, homocysteine and HSCRP. These are both cardiovascular disease measures, measurements of inf inflammation. A prolactin, and the reason why prolactin is important is because many men with low testosterone have high prolactin levels as the chief cause of this, and you definitely want to get a prolactin done in the beginning to rule this out. Hemoglobin A1C, which is a measure of blood sugar levels averaged over a three-month period, a full thyroid panel, TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and thyroid antibodies, as well as a PSA or prostate-specific antigen and an SHBG or steroid hormone binding globulin. These are all the tests that you want to get done right off the bat. The reason being is we want to get these tests done so that we then can re-evaluate the same test after TRT therapy. Another final thing that you want to get done here, which isn't really a blood test, but is a important vital marker is blood pressure, especially high blood pressure is related to uh, erectile dysfunction as well and general cardiovascular health. We don't want the blood pressure to be going up when you are undergoing TRT. We want to make sure that it's heading down. All of these things should be optimizing. Now, when we talk about testing, depending on where you are in the world, you're going to get two different evaluations. So this is important. Up here on this chart, you'll see measurements in European units, which are nanomoles per liter. And you can sort of see the distribution from young males in the 25 to 34 range up to 85 and 100 older men and what the averages are, as well as the standard deviations for total testosterone and free testosterone. SHBG, steroid hormone binding globulin, whether you're in Europe or in the United States, it's always going to be measured in nanomoles per liter. In the Western world or in, sorry, not the Western world, but in the West in terms of the United States, it's going to be nanograms per deciliter or nanograms or picograms per milliliter where you'll be measuring. You can see the standard deviations here as well. So you want to look at your labs. Are we dealing with nanomoles per liter? nanograms per deciliter or picograms per milliliter. This is going to determine what you do as far as initial lab values for testosterone. Here's another chart for you where you can see total testosterone levels. Typically in the nanograms per deciliter, most labs will rank normal as 300 to 1,000. In my mind, if you are below 500 and also dealing with uh, testosterone deficiency like symptoms, you're probably going to want to experiment with TRT. That is equivalent to 10.4 to 41.6 nanomoles per liter. And you can see the ranges there as well. 
can also see here free testosterone in picograms per milliliter and 190 in picomoles per liter. And down here at the bottom, you can see where picograms per milliliter and nanograms per deciliter are basically uh, shown as different evaluations here. You can see that, for example, someone who has 47 to 244 in terms of picograms per milliliter, that's going to be equivalent to 4.7 to 24.4 nanograms per deciliter. The only reason I'm going through all this with you guys is because you want to make sure you know, depending on where you are, if you're in the UK or Europe versus the United States, and what these lab values are. Here's some more optimal ranges for you. Optimals for DHEA sulfate, 350 to 490. Estradiol, 20 to 30. Total testosterone, 700 to 900. That's basically where you want to be. With adequate, adequate TRT going as high as 1,200, I've seen be very effective. And then free testosterone, 20 to 25 picograms per milliliter. Normal sex hormone binding globulin levels, very important measure to get. This is SHBG. You can see those here. 20 to 60 is where you want to be. Once that starts getting above 60, you're probably decreasing your free or direct testosterone and going to start seeing some deficiency-like symptoms. Follow-up testing to get, chem panel again, especially paying attention to ALT and AST. These are liver enzymes that we want to make sure are not elevated under testosterone therapy. The complete blood cell count, CBC, especially paying attention to hemoglobin and hematocrit. We do not want these levels to go up. Testosterone can increase hemoglobin levels and hematocrit levels. We do not want um, the, the blood values of these to go up too high out of normal, so we're paying close attention to them. Of course, you want to always get total and free testosterone to see how your therapy is raising your levels. You want to make sure you're not aromatizing, so you want to get an estradiol level. Oftentimes, you want to make sure you're still looking at blood sugar levels. TRT therapy will almost always optimize blood sugar, so hemoglobin A1C should be going down. And you also want to measure of how TRT is impacting the prostate, so a PSA or prostate-specific antigen and an SHBG, steroid hormone binding globulin, are wise to get. And of course, as before, you want to make sure your blood pressure is decreasing rather than increasing on TRT.